Okay, uh, good evening, everybody. I'd uh, like to uh, uh, call this meeting to order of the uh, Committee of the Whole Community Development of November 6, 2023. Um, we have a uh, quite a slew of people here from various delegations, and uh, uh, you know, um, it would be, uh, we'll just go through the delegations and name them all at that point. We also have uh, the media representation here, so welcome to the Beacon as well, and uh, uh, some people, uh, some members of, uh, of, uh, of our township. So, uh, uh, good to see you here tonight, and uh, I will point out, by the way, that uh, there is a little bit of uh, uh, refreshments at the back there uh, near the kitchenette. Feel, feel feel free to grab something as you're there. If you're uh, famished at all, these meetings can go along, although this one, you never know what happens. We have, uh, we have some delegations. So uh, uh, so I guess I'd like to call it to order. I would like to talk about an approval of the agenda. Um, we were planning earlier on doing a, a special announcement at 615, but time got away from us, unfortunately. So we need to add a fourth delegation, which will be actually as the number one uh, slot um, for Elantra. They're here to talk to us about uh, property in the uh, National Park that we've uh, just closed on together. So uh, uh, we'd like to uh, have that added as the fourth delegation, but call it A as opposed to D. Uh, okay, any uh, other uh, changes to the agenda we would like to see? Yeah. I, I don't find the way but... So uh, it's going to be five. So this will be five A, and then the digital service squad will be five B, C, B. Okay, so the power is changing. Exactly. Just changing that. Out. Exactly. Okay. Changing that so yeah, I need to ask for approval. For that. I am asking for approval for that. Then. Yep. Okay. Uh, and uh, Joe, do you have anything you'd like to change? Sorry, Carolyn, come right down. Can you hear me? No, I can't hear you. But... Hello. No. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, so nothing there then. So, uh, okay, so uh, uh, let's uh, call for a vote on the approval of the agenda as amended. Uh, all in favor? I think you need a mover. Oh, sorry. You're right. Can I have a mover or a second? I guess it's a second. There you go. Go second it. Go second it. Gotcha. Okay, all in favor? Okay, there we go. Uh, all right, moving to number three disclosure of pecuniary interest or conflict of interest and the general nature thereof. Number Does anybody three. have anything on no, no, nothing for you. Okay, perfect. Uh, and I have nothing, so that's good. Um, all right, business arising from the previous committee minutes, uh, uh, if any. Um, uh, sorry, Deputy Mayor Dillabar, anything for you? Sir, any, anything from you on no. business arising? No, no. thank you. No, Mr. Martel. Okay, good. All right, so now moving on to delegations and presentations. Uh, so A is uh, going to be from a lander to talk about the, um, uh, the property in the industrial, uh, um, uh, industrial park, as well as after we finish with their delegation, we are going to have a quick little pause to, uh, to uh, take a photo with them as well and uh, take care of that part of the business. So thank you very much. All right. All right, perfect. Who's presenting? sort of uh, modular 
Mine's a very building that we can build in shop. We can transform the kind of kind of roads and all that. Build uh, wall panels, uh, uh, floor panels, or a lot of wood framing uh, uh, apartment buildings to help speed up their. I'm not a swimmer, we still have the table. Every swimming room in there. And we also have the investment in the building and the purchase and the technology to do. And both of them will be coming to the office in the next year. We'll have a good position in the studio and a good slide in the studio. The video is not too long. I'll just explain some of the things. We've actually been around uh, since around 1981, uh, growing throughout uh, Eastern Canada and well established in the Atlantic Canada region. Um, and we're uh, in focus trying to help develop our communities as well as move forward with our business. So here you kind of see a map that shows uh, the different locations that we have for, for our physical units. Um, and included on that would be the Fusion Yard of the Town, Ontario. Here you can see uh, just a couple of uh, elevation drawings of uh, our shop that we took. So we'll have uh, kind of three main open days, as well as uh, one for kind of inventory location. Uh, so we have said earlier that uh, in our rental fleet, uh, we have a, a wide variety of different models that we use to uh, produce, such as hot trailers, lunch rooms, locker rooms. Shower uh, washrooms, heat storage, elevator trailers, as well as uh, we work with custom options as well. So, kind of videos are regarding some of our uh, analyzed our videos. I used to have a So another part of the business that I can't go is the uh, custom modular design. So uh, basically we have uh, three modules in our uh, time control facility, so we have to replace as well as keep projects on time and uh, moving kind of as fast as possible. And it will help also allow us on site to get building what it takes very quickly. Um, so that way there's no uh, internal damage compared to like skip build uh, alternatives. Mm -hmm. And it's like Mark said as well, a wide variety of applications, hotels, apartments, uh, camps, uh, cottages, so a lot of 
We also have a few uh, videos that kind of go through uh, that as well. So we're not seeing a video on our side here, but I guess it's just yeah. So, so we've hired out some but it's you know, PowerPoint struggles out here. But. <laughs> That's okay. I think it's from the it's from PowerPoint, right? And PowerPoint only shows one screen and you know it's it's too late for how long. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 645. Hey, can you guys hear me? Are you miming the meeting? Are we, oh, sorry? Yeah. we can hear you. We can hear you, Joe. Awesome. Are, are you miming the meeting? Why you can't hear us? Not very well, no. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, <laughs> we were trying. We tried to smile. Let's go. Smile.
What's going on there? Uh, we're just having some technical difficulties, sir. We're all enjoying cookies. Yeah. You could have too. Joe, can you feed the Atlantis for me all again? He's got enough for cookies. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> have you given up or are you good? Oh, okay. Oh, there it is. We're done with yeah, it. and uh, we apologize. We are uh, uh, in our temporary location currently, and we don't have our usual <laughs> tech, and so uh, uh, we're hoping to get back to that soon. But I think it's not going to be as soon as we want. But uh, anyway, carry on. Sorry about that. Sorry about yeah, that. No worries. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, as I said earlier, uh, back to the topic of the meeting. Business would be custom modular builds. Uh, we have a variety of ranges and options with that. So, um, we have a few of our uh, past projects that kind of highlight a few of our different uh, lines of business. So, directly into bunk houses and custom units, cottages, uh, as well as the non monthly units. Um, but, sorry, just wondering, right? Right. Right. the one in the top left, what is it? Is that sort of a bunk house? Is that what you said? That's yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So we, we build them and uh, rent them as well as an individually to so be for to uh, ag, uh, companies in the agricultural business and or we could turn them all together, but the series them together and use them for uh, mining. And, uh, but over photo is uh, the office building that we that all right. Yeah, you guys, that's it. You want to talk more? Or that's, I guess the video is going to say all of the videos. That's perfect. Well, we're going to get to that as well. I'm sure that we'll have some questions for you as well. I know I do. But, uh, Mr. Mayor, do you have any questions? I don't have any questions. No? Okay. Mr. Deputy Mayor? I just have one. When you when you uh, say uh, you do these buildings and panels, do you do them complete, like the plumbing and the electrical, or is it, or you, you just do the shell and the other contractors responsible for it? The, uh, the modular ones that are built in the shop, we, we do like 90% of uh, the electrical plumbing, and they're just, uh, once you get to the site, there's some connections to be made on site. Right. Uh, and uh, the hand lines portion of our business, we basically just send the wall, walls and floors, and there's uh, once they're put in site, then, then uh, local trades would be left to take it from there and do the last call. Good. Thank you. That's great. Um, and and uh, the yeah, anyway, it was just it was so neat to see how all these things were arriving and they were just putting the putting the walls up as they were getting off the truck truck basically. Right? So um and it, I guess my question might be a little vague, but so you know, can you guys build it faster as well because you're building it under a controlled circumstance, or is it just that you do it out so that you can get the building closed up quicker? What's the what's the main um the, the main uh, the main advantage, I guess, if you will? Yeah, we can build it uh, you know faster in the shop because you know we've got uh running tables and equipment to Move uh, the materials and the product to them, and then also it, 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 it speeds up production on the site as well. Because while let's say the uh, foundation is all in, we're also working on uh, according to the building and they have it ready. So, when, you know, uh, whenever it's done, they don't have to stop and start you know, playing the building, you know, it's kind of easy to let something be done. Okay. But, uh, the video of the uh the the building the 36 million three story the building that you know that building that and
Uh, and then uh, the only other question I had is so uh, you're planning to be able to build everything out of out of this building here as well in, in the township, or is it you know, specialized to certain things? Or? Yeah, the main the main uh, uh, the primary focus is on this would be the the Cornell Building Group, which is of our of our uh, units that are but it's going to be uh, it's going to be large enough so we have the ability to take on and build uh, various projects that as in order to uh, be secure projects I guess right I mean, specialty projects I would have to be legal or the law family business. Thank you very much. That's great. Uh, any other questions? Then no, not much. Joe, I think. Oh, uh, yeah, right. I yeah, don't see Joe. I wrote down Joe with a big arrow this way. Hey, Joe, can you hear us okay still? Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. perfectly now. Yeah, got any questions, Joe? Or, sorry, Councillor Martel? No, no, sir, I don't. Perfect. Okay. No problem. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. So, uh, why don't we uh, take a pause? Do I have to call a pause or anything? Or just this is part of the meeting? Get away. I want to say welcome on the oh. record. So, like, yeah, so if I can, you know, if I can stand and yep. you know, actually do that, that would be appreciated. And then we can maybe take part in that pause for a couple of minutes. Perfect. 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 That's okay. So, so first, I just want to say welcome to, right. on behalf of uh, council and, and our staff, I can say that. You know, we're thrilled to finally, uh, you know, be here with you today to announce, you know, an, an exciting addition uh, that, that will round out, you know, our thriving industrial park. Um, I believe that it it will help position Edwards Court Cardinal and and really with what you said tonight, um, you know, the greater uh, Leeds and Grenville area for, you know, greater growth. Um, the addition of the launcher leasing we not only help, I believe, to the future success for Edwards for Cardinal, but I think that we're, we really are helping open doors for development across Leeds Grenville. Um, we were out, I think it was the 150 anniversary at HFI recently, right? Mm -hmm. And we noticed that there were several uh, Elantra mobile offices in, in the parking lot there helping uh, HFI during their expansion and their new builds. Um, you know, there's no doubt that having a partner like the Elantra in our industrial park will help create more um, economic opportunities, attract future investments for our area, and foster uh, greater economic possibilities in, in all of eastern Ontario. We know, uh, as our council, that Edwardsburg Cardinal, is there, our location makes us an ideal strategic location for businesses to, to come that are they're looking for establishment of, of a strong presence in Ontario this this is a great place uh, to do that our proximity to major transportation routes and our access to a talented workforce they help to create an environment that's conductive to long-term success and that's exactly what what we wish for for a long-term leasing and, and our partnership with Edwardsburg Cardinal is nothing but long-term success so so Marcus uh, Trevor, Ron, and and Doug, uh, and all of your team at Elantra, welcome to Edwards Cardinal. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Does make sure yeah. whoever's taking the picture is very tough. Why don't you move up? Why don't you move up? And you do right to And on this is the then the first come up and Everybody look and smile at that. You make the best smile in the school. Here, let me talk. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice meet you guys. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So, uh, well, uh, what's that, sir? I think she may have to start recording again. Still, she's not done. Are we going to start again? Are we recording? I think we're still recording, but I can't. Oh, we're still recording? Okay. Yeah. We're still recording. Okay. So, we're good. We're good to go now. Okay. That's pretty good. I love it. I love it. So uh, uh, again, I'd like to thank people from uh, from Lunch for coming out. They did actually uh, leave from the east coast of Canada earlier today to get here. So uh, it was a big big thing to again. Yeah, truly appreciate that effort. So um, yep. Welcome Perfect. Okay. So moving on to number five B, then uh, we have Digital Service Squad uh, progress update from uh, Taylor Prosser. Uh, welcome, Taylor. How are you doing, sir? Good. Good. Good luck, Taylor. <laughs> We're hoping you have the skills that are getting through. <laughs> we probably should have asked him. Really. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you for having me here tonight. Uh, my name is Taylor Proctor. I am the information coordinator for the Central Area. Um, so basically, that's okay. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I go around and serve. I was very hard to know. I got in Augusta Township in helping bring the uh, program and grant to from Central uh, uh, so essentially tonight, we're just going to talk a bit about Digital Main Street, uh, the grants that they offer and the program, uh, as well as we'll take a dive into the numbers uh, of the grants and programs in the South Carolina area, and then take a deep dive into the township of the Rupert Carmel system. Uh, so to start, uh, Digital Main Street uh, was created in Toronto uh, with a goal of helping small businesses uh, with the adoption of technology and essentially helping them boost their online presence and keep up in this digital world. And they do so by offering grants, programs, and services uh, to all small businesses. Uh, so starting off with the grants, uh, this grant recently closed at the end of September. Uh, it's called the Digital Transformation Grant, which is a $2,500 grant uh, that is used for small businesses to assist uh, in the adoption of technology, 
uh, like we see our digital literacy, literacy skill through uh, training, required group support. Um, and eligible costs for this grant include uh, digital marketing, uh, whether it be website or uh, uh, social media advertising. So website development and improvement, uh, digital training uh, and software, and also some other partners. Uh, the digital research closed. Um, not sure when it will open again for another round. It's been three rounds now, I believe, three or four. Yeah. Um, the other grant that is open right now is called the Canada Digital Adoption Plan or Canada PDAP. Which is a $2,400 grant. Uh, that is more directed towards e-commerce. Um, you can help uh, small businesses with the adoption of an e-commerce strategy. Uh, eligible costs for this grant include uh, improvement or development of a e-commerce website, uh, e-commerce software, some of the hardware, uh, digital market marketing that is related to uh, your e-commerce store. Uh, or any other costs that are related to implementing your e commerce strategy. Uh, now, moving on to the programs, they have uh, the Shop Your program, um, which pairs you with an e commerce coordinator to help you uh, create, uh, market, and uh, train you how to manage uh, online store. Uh, as well as, if you already have a online store using um, the Shopify or Lightspeed or Square, uh, they will also assist you in any help you may need. Um, and then there is the uh, Digital Service Squad, which offers uh, free one-on-one -on -one digital support for small businesses uh, to help them digitally improve in their business. Uh, this could be in a number of things, whether it's social media help, uh, website design help, online presence, uh, SEO, uh, and much other things. Uh, I have a document that I'll hand out at the end of the presentation as well that kind of outlines it more what we offer. Uh, as for past programs, uh, one that I wanted to bring up is called Future Proof, uh, which was created as a COVID 19 support measure uh, to help future proof small businesses and drive recovery. Uh, this program helps businesses identify new markets, uh, pivot their business model, and developing and improving a deep digital transformation plan. Um, this is one that we would like to see come back. And just going over the numbers for Seth Fremble, uh, the first year that Digital Ministry Program was offered uh, was in 2020, and this was with uh, Future Group. The digital transformation grant, uh, the digital service squad program, and the shop here program. Uh, as for numbers, uh, for the digital transformation grant, we saw a total of 58 grants uh, being delivered uh, within the South Carolina area um, between now and 2020. Uh, CDAP was offered until last year, so we have seen uh, three grants so far being distributed, and there are also three more as we speak that are going through the application process. Um, as for the Shop Here program, uh, we saw 36 businesses complete uh, this program in one way or another, whether it be implementing a store or just needing some help with their website. And then, as well as the 150 businesses have reached, uh, received help from the uh, digital service program. Uh, as for the Township of North Cardinal, since 2020, uh, 10 digital transformation grants have been distributed. Uh, there have been two PDAP grants that have been distributed, and 10 businesses uh, have received help from the Shop Here program, as well as 45 different businesses received help from the digital service. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, not really a question, just um, it's nice to see the numbers, yep. you know, um, and I, I will say thank you for, you know, joining uh, joining the team at the Digital Service Squad. 
uh, to, you know, take over the work. It's important. It certainly helped a lot of folks, you know, and small businesses, you know, like, you know, our, we didn't do it, mm -hmm. but, but like, you know, our business, um, be able to still work and be able to contribute through it. And not only through that, um, you know, even today to compete, um, with a bigger market for sure. You know, it's, it's good for that. So thanks for helping me out. It's good to see that it's evenly split, really. I didn't, yeah. I wasn't sure that it would be that even. It looks like it's a third, a third, and a third, pretty mm -hmm. much, right? Pretty close, yeah. yeah. Pretty close. Yeah. Good. And no word on continued funding from the province, though, just the federal one for now? For the CDAP one, yeah. 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 Just continue on the uh, sustainable transportation grant. We have enough to get for it. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Thanks, uh, Alec. Keep up the work. I'll hand you up this stuff. You guys get a better look. Thanks. Yeah, the, uh, the, the mayor took it, uh, that uh, digital transformation grant. Oh, I'm glad, though. I, I'm hoping that we can uh, get that up and running. Is there anything that we can do with the council, maybe, or if, uh, or send a letter to them or whatever to maybe help uh, get the digital transformation grant back and keep that funding. I think the number is funding. And uh, another thing, we had a new business just open up here. Um, and I guess that I've been working with them pretty close. It's the restaurant at Cardinal, actually. And uh, I wonder if I could maybe pass it on to them that, and get in contact with, or maybe have you got in contact with them? Yeah. Uh, oh, good. I have a visitor here, but my email is not Okay. That may work well. Yeah. Good. Because I think he could maybe uh, use some help there too. So, yeah. Great. Actually, I was talking about when you get up and Okay. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, well done. Yeah, the numbers are there. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. No problem. And um, the numbers are there. Um, and if, like I said, if we can do anything to get that program back, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll do our best. Sure. Thanks again. Thank you. No worries. We're going to do this for Councilor Martell. You got any questions, sir? Uh, no questions, but thank you to the speaker for, for dropping in for sure. Thanks a lot. Perfect. Thank you very much, Taylor. Appreciate your time. Uh, all right, so uh, so moving on to number five C, which is uh, delegation from base load power. Uh, Jonathan Sandler, you're doing okay. your yourself perfectly. Come on up, Jonathan. That was good. Um, and uh, they're going to talk about a uh, uh, municipal support for a battery energy storage project. So, uh, welcome, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. What's that? Once. Yep. He's already been there. This is the second. Yep. This yeah. is the second delegation. This is um, second. Cool. Well, thank you very much for uh, allowing me to come again today. Second time to update you on the last presentation and the information that we presented. Uh, I will try to go through the slides that we've already. Uh, discussed, but um, you know a little bit more about base load power. So, uh, speaking, uh, you know, in terms of our projects, we do have a couple of other projects in other municipalities that we are developing as well as as the township here. However, our, you know, our focus is on this project. We were pre-qualified by the ISO to uh, work with this project, so it is already been, uh, as I said, well, we've, we've pre-qualified as a company, but also the project has been pre-qualified. So it will be, you know, bid into this upcoming RFP process. And the RFP process is, is in response to, as we've discussed before, the Ontario system is in dire need of electricity resources. They're looking for about 4,000 megawatts. In a pre, um, in an RFP process that they already ran in February, they did award contracts to energy, to battery energy storage projects, as well as natural gas projects. Obviously, for our perspective, you know, we think battery energy storage is really a critical piece of the puzzle for the overall system. And these RFP processes are, are competitive processes. And so one of the components to fitting into the RFP is uh, you know, obtaining from council a very high level uh, 
support and principal uh, from the Council of Steel that the project is supported, but there's still, it's not under yeah. approval for the project. It still has to go through all of the normal approval processes uh, from the province, from the electrical uh, and environmental perspective, and also from the municipality as well. So uh, the, the support letter is, as I said, is just a support and principal. We talked a little bit about battery storage systems in the past. Uh, one of the things I just want to highlight here is that there's each container is about is a sort of like a shipping container. Inside the container, there is cooling systems, there is uh, safety uh, elements uh, to deal with, you know, uh, any kind of thermal runaway or fire concerns. Uh, there's venting, there's panels that will pop off to allow for more air flow to come in as a safety measure to avoid any potential issue as a way to mitigate it. And then as you can see in, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but there are modules uh, that are stacked on top of each other. Each module is itself monitored for heat and any other kind of, you know, a normal operating condition. So attributes about uh, battery energy storage, I think we that before, but compared to the alternative, which is really natural gas, it doesn't create any direct greenhouse gases or any other kind of pollution. Uh, it is, as I mentioned, proven to be cost competitive. Under the last RFP, there were natural gas projects and battery and storage projects. The price that was uh, published by the government is actually quite comparable. So battery and storage is competitive with other technologies. And we discussed it before, but we will also, battery and storage system will save the province and all of the rate payers um, money in terms of their, you know, because we have excess supply for electricity at night, we can store that excess supply and use it during the peak times during the day, rather than having to go and buy that peak power from our neighbors elsewhere. So it's a made in Toronto solution, and it would also avoid the need to build brand new power lines. Um, we talked about this particular project, it's, with, it's already been pre-approved for up to 300 megawatts, we're still trying to define exactly the size of the project, but that process is going to happen over the course of the next few weeks. The location is off of Ventnor Road. Uh, it's a total of about 25 acres in, in, the, in, uh, in terms of the, the road use, uh, or the road, excuse me, the electrical line, the actual battery system, any setbacks that are required for property lines and whatnot. The location that we've selected is strategic because of the fact that it's so far away from homes. So it, it really, by having that distance, it mitigates uh, you know, noise concerns, any kind of safety concerns, and sight lines, and, and so on and so forth. The property is located on private land outside of environmental sensitive areas. The property actually has, uh, under the official plan, it, uh, the, this particular project is considered a permitted use. So uh, a rezoning may not necessarily be entirely required. However, site plan and site control is still part of the process. And as I mentioned, the ISO has already confirmed uh, that it is a reliable spot to, to inject the power because we will be charging at night and then discharging back during the day during the peak times. Uh, the property is also located really right close to the power line. The power line is on site, so there is a very small power line to be built. As I mentioned, it's located far from the road, so that you know it definitely improves the sight lines. We can build and add any kind of uh, visual screening that's required if that becomes a, a concern for the community. The existing access road will be off, off of, uh, used for, for the project, and there is an existing farm road as well, and we would just be upgrading that farm road. That farm road would uh, have to be a four season road to ensure that you know emergency vehicles and whatnot can be uh, you know can access the site at all times as well as our own operation team. The um, the other thing I guess to mention is that you know in terms of land use battery energy storage is much more efficient it's a much more dense uh, you know with electricity in terms of density so you get way more megawatts out of a much smaller foot, uh, footprint than something like solar farm or wind. So this is the map of the project. And the yellow, the orange line is represents the existing hydro transmission system. It's a 230 kV uh, system. 
The red areas represent the actual parcel, but only the blue area is where the batteries were located. So it's not that even though the red areas are identified, they're just identified for the perspective of the parcels that are being contemplated for the project. But the, the blue area is really where the batteries excuse me, would be located. The uh, green line would be the new, uh, new power line that we would have to build to get to the connection point. And the connection point is highlighted in yellow, in the yellow strips. So the local benefits for the project we propose would be there's multiple financial benefits. One of them is recurring community benefit payments. These payments would be uh, over you know, per year, over 20 years. We're anticipating that you know it, it's going to be in you know many tens of thousands of dollars, if not above hundred thousand dollars per year. We're just finalizing the size. I mentioned before the size of the project is a critical piece of the puzzle. And so um, we'll have more uh, knowledge exactly of you know the amounts uh, once we finalize the size and once the project has been um, you know awarded a contract because if, if if there's no contract from the RFP process then unfortunately the project is kind of on hold and and it's on hold until you get a contract from those RFP process. So again, similarly, like we wouldn't be going through any you know municipal permitting process until we were successful under the RFP. Um, there will also be increased tax revenues uh, and also local materials would be you know used to you know to the maximum uh, possible possible way in which we can. Obviously from our perspective, from you know both the municipality perspective and from our perspective, you know, using local resources, the materials, the labor, service industries, it benefits it's a win-win. We don't have to ship in all this stuff. From outside for this particular project, we're anticipating and it's just you know, anticipation depending on the resources that are available that we could uh, foresee spending about ten million dollars of construction uh, funds in the municipality uh, for the local materials and equipment, and then obviously the say you know tertiary service industry is also being utilized. The project has the uh, potential opportunity to help. Strengthen the quality, reliability, and security of the system that's you know cutting right through Edward Burr Cardinal. And so um, you know it does provide potential additional security for the sort of the overall system in this area because you will have substations that are feeding from the power lines, and these substations would then be feeding the power the, the roof of the electric lines that are running on the municipal roof. Uh, we would also obviously for you know, have a road use agreement so that we're ensuring that any damage uh, to the roads is repaired at our cost. And this will carry on for the life of the project. In terms of stakeholder consultation to date, we've held a stakeholder consultation with the township staff. We did, as you know, maybe make the delegation to council on October the 10th. We've had multiple consultations with South Nation Conservation Authority. And we held a public meeting. There was a total of um, there was a total of ten uh, people that had signed in to the public meeting. Um, we went through a two-hour presentation with them. Uh, the meeting was held on Wednesday, November first, and the feedback forms were delivered, you know, offered up to all the participants along with self-addressed envelopes so that they could return their feedback to us. To date, uh, we haven't received any feedback, but obviously the, the window is open. Uh, there will be, uh, you know, if this project is awarded a contract in the RFP process, there will be multiple consultations, many more open houses with the community. Uh, we have listed our presentation on our project website, as well as it is posted from my understanding on the township website as well. The questions that came up were regarding uh, fire, groundwater, decommissioning, setbacks from homes, uh, setbacks from environmental areas, municipal approval process, and the financial community benefits, which were all answered by our staff in the presentation. All the information is contained in the presentation. This particular presentation is a bit of a summary, but we have included all of uh, the information in the appendices to this presentation. So the top you know, the, I, we sort of tried to highlight what were the top four concerns that were raised 
interim community meeting. And so uh, NOID was one of them. One of the things that we discussed is that uh, NOID uh, regulation, it, you know, we have to meet all NOID regulations. The, the regulation standard in Ontario is that at, uh, at nighttime in a rural area, we have to meet 40 decibels. Uh, so 40 decibels is basically dead quiet. I don't know if, I, if you've experienced this, but I have tested it myself. Uh, in other locations, we've actually done some uh, ambient noise assessments, and those are also 40 decibels. So basically, the rule is you cannot add any new noise to what an otherwise would be dead quiet. And this regulation is in place for the whole full life of the program. The other uh, you know, question was around fire uh, management. And so, you know, as part of that process, we have reached out to the fire chief. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't had a chance to speak as of yet, but we have spoken with the fire chiefs across the province. And what we can say about uh, the, the issues around fire, I mean, there is a lot of uh, sensationalized uh, situation going on uh, in terms of overall risk. Uh, what we're seeing is that if we took all of the bad burnings, that you may see uh, an issue at one to two percent, and the issue that exists would be in one of the modules. In so one one percent of all of the modules, you know, in a farm, uh, you know, you would have a potential issue. So that would be so. If we have a hundred, for example, there are hundred containers at one of the locations. You may have one module within one of those containers that has a thermal issue. And that issue can be mitigated through different uh, safety mechanisms within the actual container itself. So it doesn't necessarily mean that an issue is going to automatically turn into a problem. Uh, as part of the fire management plan, there will be a hazard uh, mitigation assessment, there will be a fire risk assessment, fire protection and design, and emergency response plan, all of which will be coordinated with the fire chief. And the education, integration, and awareness would all be part of that plan. The one thing I can say, and we've spoken to many experts in the, uh, in the industry, uh, one of the things that keeps coming up is that a battery fire is no, is no, is actually less toxic than a normal house. The, the chemicals that are in the house and the situation you know, like that causes the fire, those uh, issues are it's, it's exponentially more than the uh, potential concern. Excuse me, uh, in respect to that. So, and there's nothing new in it, in, it, in terms of the fire department is actually already trained on how to manage a fire. There is no new information that they need specifically to deal with batteries. In terms of groundwater management, um, obviously, a groundwater management plan will be provided, and um, you know, we don't see any issues in terms of in terms of that perspective. Uh, there will be. Um, there will be some containment because transformer stations, just like I go on these containment, we will be doing the same thing. In terms of the basic plan, the project the contract is about 20 year contract uh, with the ISO. The, because this is critical infrastructure, it's part of the electricity system, their likelihood to extend it would be quite high. And in the event that there is a decommissioning, uh, our agreement with the landowner is to remove all the equipment and return the land back to its normal state. And then there is possible re uh, re uh, re recycling for battery projects. Uh, in terms of permitting, I know we're running out of time, um, but basically the, so the permitting is required for the same as what I do on the road. And, uh, and we talked about the zoning. And so in terms of municipal support, we are asking for the council to provide the municipal support resolution, which again, as I said, is being the principles of the project and would not give any specific approvals to proceed. So, there you go. I will leave it to that. that <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. I know it's a lot to handle. And I mean, I think, um, uh, you know, we on council have, have seen it, have seen it a few times in the election between yourself and other, and other interested parties. And uh, uh, it's good to get the refresher first for people in attendance as well as uh, to put it on camera. So, uh, with that, uh, any, any more questions, uh, Mr. Uh, Deputy Mayor? Um, I just had a couple. You say you're doing uh 25 acres, but you're also taking 200 acre buffer. Is that right? So it's going to be 225, 25 for the actual batteries, 200 for a buffer. We have a 25 acre for the entire project, which right. includes the road, yeah, 
and power line and in battery. Yeah. And then in terms of setback, we have actually, um, I think it's almost 900 meters setback from any house mm -hmm. or potential house. So we don't necessarily need that much space. It just gives a, a much more comfort that we're going to meet all of the conditions and that anything that really is of concern is significantly mitigated because it's so far. Right. But you're going to be leasing the 25 acres plus the 200 acres. Is that right? Uh, our agreement with the landowner is, yes, yeah, so in terms of how much land we need, mm -hmm. uh, we want the landowners to continue to farm. Okay. So there will be a secure defense around the whole the 25 acres. acres. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, and so we do want the landowner to farm that property up to the fence. Okay. Uh, number two, you said that uh, we would get approximately $100,000 per year for 20 years. Our expectation. Is that your expectation? Yeah. yeah like, again, we, we don't know the exact size no, of the project, but it, we're, we're talking a yeah, significant uh, investment that we would be making Plus, on an annual basis. Very good. Plus the spin off of adding it and equipment to build your, the 25 acres. During the construction. Yes. yes. And, and I also would mention that local jobs, there will be some local jobs. We do need an on site operator, we need a site. Uh, you know, maintenance or we need to make sure that road is open during winter, obviously. And so there will be uh, ongoing site maintenance and operational work where, where we see that perfect fit for a local. Hey, just one more, Mr. Uh, and uh, you said that you haven't met with your fire chief yet. Have you, have you tried to set up a meeting or? I've been, right. yeah, I've reached out to them a few times. Okay, so we haven't set, you haven't sat down with them though? I have not, really, okay. I, I've not sat down. Really. Okay, and just in closing, I was at your meeting to the public uh, on November 1st, well attended. Uh, you people answered all the questions that, that the eight people had, if you say 10, including me, I guess. Uh, it was well, well organized, and, and uh, from what I gathered from the people who were here, it was well received. So um, I you have my support, but I'm a little, I just don't get. We have an issue in our township about it, taking agriculture land away, you know, because the farmers got to farm so we can eat. And now we're putting 25 acres of factories in the country. Like that's, I have a hard time swallowing that, but I will support you. Thank you. Councilor Martel, do you have anything to add? I do not, no questions. Thanks to the speaker for the presentation. Very well done. I have like a hundred, a hundred questions. <laughs> okay, well, uh, but I won't ask them all because I think Jonathan, you've answered. I forwarded m my list. Yeah, uh, to you, and you covered most of most of those. Um, so, so ISO pre qualified the their their pre qualified projects, right? Yes, and the project is if. So the project's been pre-qualified, and if it advances from this stage, it will get bid in, you'll be able to bid into the RFP stage. Yes. Is that, am I correct in thinking that? Yes. So when you go through that pre-qualification program, are things like through the IESO, when they look at your project, are they just looking at what, what you might be able to do? Or are they looking at things like the fire suppression systems? Are they looking at... The package that you're building, knowing you're not fly by night if you've made it through the pre qualification stage. Yeah, I mean, so the idea to recognize is that every site is slightly unique in that there are a lot of um, pieces of the puzzle that are required as we move through the process. So, the fire management plan is one of the key pieces that will be part of the development, which we will be consulting with the fire chief about, and we will be developing it in concert with the, with the township. So the ISO does recognize that same with groundwater management and you know duct management, construction plans, road use agreements, all these pieces of the puzzle they recognize are kind of later stage options because there's a lot of engineering. They sort of recognize that for the developer, they don't want to end these houses, they don't want to put us all through all of that stuff now if these projects never get a contract. So they kind of they want the municipality to, to get the support because they want to know that you're working in a, a municipality that accepts the project, is interested in the project, 
that has been properly planned in, in, in many ways to address the municipal and township concerns, but they don't necessarily want you to have to go through all that detailed engineering, spending hundreds of millions of dollars or whatever, and then only find out how it didn't work out. Yep. So, um, yeah, so the ISO, uh, they qualified us from an electrical perspective, but when they came out with RFP, the rules of the RFP were set out in such a way that they wanted to make sure that we had municipal support uh, in, in principle. And that is the, you know, you can't, you, you may not pursue every single issue at this early stage, but the, the proponents are, we are, we have to put up a lot of security on this bid. So we are heavily incented to make sure that we address all the issues all the way through. Because if we come across an issue that we can't satisfy, then we lose our security bond. Right. Yeah, and the pre-qualification is just sort of narrowing that pyramid bit. Yes, yes. Okay. And right. They, they, and the security deposits are making sure that people are serious right. before they bid. And so the, and then obviously, as I mentioned, the municipal support is a big piece of it. Yeah, well, I mean, it's Ontario, it's Canada. Of course, we have to build the codes and we have to build the. I mean, I think that that's reasonable to understand that that'll come later and we're just sort of funneling, funneling it in. So I get that. So um, I just wanted to clear it up though, because yeah. I think it's important that everybody understand that you have actually pre qualified to get to, get to where you are at this point. So um, I, do, I do have a couple, so you're going to have to yeah, allow me a little bit of leeway. So, uh, Ownership is it, you're leasing the land. Yes. Okay. So what happens if the land gets sold? It's two different lots, am I correct? Yes. So what happens if one of them gets sold? It gets somebody dies, like whatever. The land, there's a land transfer. What happens to them? The the project is stick with the land. So the the if the land is sold, that that lease agreement would go with that sale. So it's it's registered on title, and it can automatically. Good. And so the other thing, the other major hurdle that I see for you is the roadway that has to be, and ultimately it's a laneway that has to be created to withstand the weight of, of batteries that are ridiculously uh, heavy. So it's not my concern. It's not our road. But I, I, I mean, it is our concern if we need to have access to that road for a fire or for any other reason. So yes. can you speak to the, the road, the building, the construction, yeah. that sort of stuff? Yeah, so the road for our purposes, I mean, the, the construction, the civil work is going to take about five to six months, and the battery shipments are going to take two to three weeks. And that will be, you know, trucks on a regular basis. The, you know, each container comes individualized and then they will obviously assemble it on the site. So the road has to withstand that much traffic to begin with, has to be built in that way. And similarly, we have to make sure that God forbid there was a problem with one of the containers, we need to bring the whole crane system and more trucks. So we have to, uh, for our insurance, for our financing, for everything in the operation of the project, that road has to be built to withstand the four feet of road. Right. right. So the, the word road concerns me a little bit. So um, you're not expecting the township to be responsible no. for the road. It's your responsibility, correct? Uh, 100%. Okay. I just wanted to be clear and on the record that, yeah. that, that, that that's the that idea. Yeah, 100% okay. that's our road. So two or three more and I'll be done. Um, are there any jobs? Like, you know, like direct jobs? I, I think you've talked about the construction jobs and stuff like that, but actual on site jobs, no, right? Well, so there will be a local um, operator. So we will need to have somebody that lives in the area that is, you know, operating, involved in operating the, the system. And we also need local people to do all the site maintenance to make sure that road is maintained, to make sure that it's, you know, four seasons all the time. Uh, and, you know, we can see other, you know, security features, um, you know, in terms of cleaning and property maintenance. Uh, we see that as an option as well, but a lot of the, you can see that there's a lot of money goes into the construction and there's not a lot of ongoing moving parts. Yeah. So, I mean, there will be, you know, there's, there's electrical contracting, 
Uh, we are using transformers that are sensing everywhere. So if there is a local uh, electrician or an engineer or what have you that can service these uh, pieces of equipment, it's way better for us and also good for the community. So every every which way we possibly can, we'll be looking for local resources, labor, uh, expertise to, to maintain. So it's not all like, even though the battery technology is advanced, uh, all those electrical lines, the connections, the converters, the transformers, these are sort of normal standard pieces of equipment that kind of anybody that's trained could offer uh, okay. uh, To staff, agricultural land, <coughs> yes, or rural land? And is it included in the Lear? And are we, are like for its 25 acres worth of the site, their containers are we collecting tax revenue off of off of an energy project? Um, Richard, the land that is proposed for this site is going to be in the same place as the site. Okay. Not sure if it's included in the um, as a public use or zoning bylaw would allow us to process the permit in any zone. Um, except for environmental protection and states that that would be the new zone that they have. But um, whether it's a cultural agreement or rural, I really like it. Okay. And, and we will collect tax revenue from it? It's not an on, on farm diversified use, correct? I'm just, I'm just trying to make sure that there's actually a benefit beyond yeah. the CDF. Yeah, sure. I, I would need to look into Can we find it? Okay. Um, and the last one, uh, Jonathan. Uh, that with wind farms and solar farms, the there is tax revenue, so we don't expect anything different. Yeah. Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll let staff answer that one. Um, and the the uh, the community benefit funding. So that one's the one that really piques my interest, right? Because because it sounds like I mean I've been following along with the presentations, obviously that you've been making. And I've heard, you know, I think the number I heard tonight was a hundred thousand. I heard three hundred thousand. So, so how do we how do we come to find out exactly what the community community benefit fund is first of all, and how do you determine the amount? And, um, you know, basically just how does it work? Yeah. And is it is it basically is it guaranteed? So yes, it is guaranteed revenue. It would be a contract that we would enter into with the township. Um, what we're, you know, because it's a competitive process, we want to make sure, obviously, that if, you know, if other projects are offering the same thing, which likely they are, you know, what are they offering and how do we compare? And we want to make sure that we are uh, you know, competitive, that we are presenting a market value for this amount. So from what we understand, uh, the amount is $1,000 per megawatt per year. And it's just the reason I have given different ranges of numbers is we're not exactly sure how many megawatts would be uh, for, you know, to be built at the site. So in, as, as you mentioned, the top number could be 300 megawatts, but uh, we don't know if that's in fact the, the size of the project yet. So we're just trying to finalize that. But so we know for sure that 100 megawatts is the floor. And so that's why we do it. Okay, so that would get us to the hundred thousand. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. Three hundred thousand would get us to the three. Yeah, and we can, and as part of the, you know, as part of the municipal uh, support, uh, we can, we have done and considered including this contract as part of that support element in sort of like a not a condition, but an element of you know, providing support because there are these local benefits. And and so you said you said that if you if you go through the RFP process, the IESO grants you the contract. It's a twenty year non cancelable contract. It, or can it, they cancel it at any time? No, no, they cannot cancel it. Okay. Twenty year. Offer, yes, a twenty year contract. Um, mm -hmm. We're putting up it would be hundreds of millions of dollars of infrastructure in the ground, mm -hmm. and so no, we nobody can cancel it because it would be wouldn't. So the, so the township as a revenue source would see from from this project if it produced 300 megawatts a year 
then we would see $300,000 a year for 20 years, guaranteed. I, I, I'm a little bit hesitant to say 300. If I'm going to the ceiling. I know you want to go to the floor, I but I don't want to go. To the <laughs> I, I, I would love to go to the ceiling, but I just uh, want to be careful. So the minimum that we could see would be 100,000 a year for 20 years. Yes. Correct? Yes. A lot, there's a lot of pain in your It's a lot of pain in your uh, Absolutely. Not a lot of effort on what we have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, so I'm sort of more. <laughs> I'm, yeah. in 90, I'm in 98. I'm, a, I'm in 98. I think honestly, you did a good job with mine. I'm just trying to think of other ones that I've that I that I came up with uh, before, and I know so many of them will get answered as you move down the process because this is more the beginning than than the finalization. So yeah, you were mentioning about uh, operations building. So interestingly enough. Uh, the last uh, delegation, the one before the delegation, you know, probably would look to their um, services to build up uh, an right. operation center. Yeah, exactly. I could see that there might have been a synergy there. Yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, I already, yeah, I think I, Donald's done a good job with the questions. Oh, perfect. Good. Um, and I uh, actually is difficult to ask it sometimes because then you don't have to ask as many questions because I think you guys put most of the stuff, but uh, we covered most of the questions here as well. Um, I did have some uh, uh, some feedback from people along the way. I guess word gets out, and uh, uh, I don't think they attended. They're certainly not here tonight. But uh, there, a lot of people's concerns um, are surrounding, you know, well, fire. Some people said explosion, um, and and you know, not to scare, but I mean that's obviously a a, a scary concept. And uh, um, you know, I, I you know, knowing how that looks and how you work with our fire department, I think is important uh, as an aspect. Um, and and I'm not sure. I mean, I, you know, my only experience on this is what you see on TV and TV shows. So you know, but I understand battery putting a fire, battery fires are can be different different than other fires and might need specialized equipment and things like that. So how does that work as far as working with the fire chief to to acquire these uh, these assets? I guess that we would need or, or what does that look like? And, and, uh, yeah. So so current best practices are that you know you might have some water reservoir on site. But you do not need, they don't, you know, they're not using uh, special fire retarders because they won't really work when there's potential for contamination. So we stay away from that. And there isn't any specialized equipment in it per se. Uh, as I was mentioning before, a battery fire is, uh, there's nothing new in terms of mitigating or managing. It's all been done before. It, it's, uh, you know, you, you've got electricity uh, infrastructure like substation that could arc uh, and create a fire, or the transformer could uh, cause a fire. And so those systems are located super close to a house, uh, the forest area. In this case, I mean, we have the benefit of distance so that we're not looking at 800, 900 meters away from the closest house. Uh, so yeah, the fire department doesn't need to invest in any specialized equipment. If there was any investment, we would make that for them, like we would pay for that. If there is an on-site water reservoir, we would cover that cost. Uh, so we do not want to bag in adding cost to fire department. That's not at all of our plan. And um, and yeah, I think as I mentioned before, we would train the fire department to obviously bring them out for specialized you know, information sessions and ongoing updates and whatnot. But again, their their training, their basic training covers all the same uh, fire fighting, you know, avenues that would be considered for fire. Okay, great. And uh like I said, I think you covered all the other questions that I had. Yeah. So appreciate the time, Jonathan. Yeah. So, uh, so, you, so, so you do have an act. I mean, ultimately, you want municipal support. So, when, when are we going to be seeing, seeing that ask, and what are you expecting uh, to be part of that that contract, that agreement, as we move forward? Because I mean, I know it's not support for the end; it's support for the beginning. So, so what does that look like? So the ISO has created an actual form that we would ask for the municipality well, together. Yep. We, a lot of it is based on the project. So we would have the, the company, the, the property information, the size of the project, the pre-qualification information that we discussed. All of that would be on the form. And we would fill it out together with the municipality of the township. 
and I guess staff and you can do it together. And then you come back to say, okay, this is the form to uh, approve. Yep. And attached to that, we can provide like a, a simple letter, you know, a commitment letter from us about the community uh, okay. benefits. And so when are you looking? Like how, when were you talking? Yeah, so we need to come back. The I think the 27th is the date of so the next council meeting. Yeah. That we were talking. So we'll see something at Act Council. Well, we're seeing something today. Uh, oh, we're going to see it later, later, later on the set of the set for this discussion at number six. Well, we're having three discussion. Sure, we are. I mean, that's <laughs> we're having a discussion now. I think six three is going to go fairly quickly because we're getting all this set now. But we're having a discussion here, then we'll bring it to council, and we'll bring it to council at the end of the month. We'll go on. Is there, I, sorry, I didn't see that. Is there a recommendation with, with that? Sure, there's a discussion item with the recommendation that you have. I read through that. I, okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, it's one Good. of the recommendations that you have. Okay. Let's see, we can fill out all those, those pieces of puzzle uh, in advance of some set. I think we talked about the 23rd. The 22nd, you have to have a form that you can go through. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, I think most of the um, table is filled out here in a draft resolution that we need to um, review. Not all of the answers we have available, so there might be some life that we need to fill in before it goes to. I think the only other one, and I know this might be putting staff on the spot a little bit, and uh, other, I mean, we've asked a ton of questions. We normally look to staff um, for their guidance and for their help and that sort of stuff. Um, are there questions that, that we haven't asked that, that ultimately we need answers to before we can make this agreement? Mr. Chair, no, I um, have the opportunity to I just want to make sure that we've yep no had the discussions. So yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's right. Appreciate it. Thanks, John. All right. All right. Well, we knew there was going to be a lot of allegations this interesting time. So uh, these are good. All right. Yeah. Absolutely. Bring them on. Well, yeah, we like the entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to number five B. Uh, uh, proposed development of six at six hundred eight County Road number two. A request for easement and Mr. Dave Annabelle from Annabelle Design okay. to, uh, to present to us. I will not be of intense. Goodness, a little wrong at the end. So happy to be here this evening. We're speaking of six hundred eight County Road two. Uh, we've got uh, clients that have uh, purchased the property and they're. They're all about transportation and adding like residential, residential <laughs> units. Uh, on this subject land, uh, we had a really good meeting um, with community development, county, uh, all parties, and uh, I believe it was the uh, CAO of the township that recommended a possible land use agreement, a maintenance agreement um, for uh, the back of it, which are going to get funded and organized. Uh, through those discussions, we found out that there is actually services on it, which we're still requiring. Uh, but then now that we know that there are services on it, we're looking to see before we start the whole long process with planning and development process that is uh, 
Maybe suggest that come here, make delegations to council, answer a few questions, or clarify any unknowns. Uh, and the, the possible support uh, for this land use agreement. So I'm here to have any questions on it. It's pretty straightforward. We're going to identify with the second building 18, uh, 16 to 18 additional units. The primary use is to uh, fulfill the amenity space and additional parking requirements for the building. Okay, thank you very much. I knew you'd catch us up on time there, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, let's start. Uh, Councillor Martel, do you have any questions on your end? I do not. I could not hear the speaker very well, but I read the material and I have no questions. Okay, great. There. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I mean, I do, I guess, have a, have a couple, right? Um, the, the only concern that I have Really, uh, Dave, and I, you know, I did mention to this you know, to to you in advance of the meeting, and I wish I would have um, had more time. You know, I hated to drop it on you then. Is but we've had an emergency exercise in in the township, and the parking lot, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, of this project was the emergency egress for. The accident that happened on the theoretical accident that happened on Highway Two, in the corner of St. Lawrence Street, blocking entrance to the Meadow Lane subdivision. That's a problem, <laughs> right? Like that's, or is it a problem? Uh, we are not connected to that. Right. When we did the emergency exercise and Meadowlands Road, the, the entrance to Meadowlands Road was blocked. There's no other entrance way into it. So the only way through that exercise, right, was was up beside and across the Adelaide access point. But there's no road there now. There's no this is not a Right. It's, it's on it's grass. I realize it is, but there's no other way in. So why not go continue using it if we ever had an emergency? There's only you need to park and then they can continue on with that. I just want to make sure that we know that it's the only Not yeah, holding, not holding them up. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, no, no. We're I, I, can see, I just don't see where right. you're going, but if, if we can't get through it anyways right now. <clears throat> like if we ever had well, an emergency exercise, we did. Yeah. Let me share this correct. That was where the open office was. Right. We used it. We used it as we used it as an emergency. No, so so where I'm going with it mm -hmm. is is the is the paving of the parking lot right accomplishing somewhat of a goal as long as it doesn't get blocked off because because if ultimately if there was that simulated accident would it not make it easier because part of that simulated accident i think was trying to find a way through there right through that grass area this way it would become paved as a parking lot all we have to do is move a couple of cars and we'd have full access sure potentially it actually helps in the long run. Through, through the chair, too, but I mean, with this information, again, just learning it, um, we're, we're starting the design process right now. So if this is something the township seriously wants us to allocate for, we could probably adjust the proposed parking. We may need uh, to shift it back to a line of 16 or a half through that you're not moving, like imagine if residents start. There are cars that are parked, um, but we definitely, the yeah, 16 meter laneway is probably, looking at my site plan, it's probably about two meters south, too much. Um, but the reason, just to align it to go straight through, if I move the laneway, the part is based on two meters, but then we're dealing with less buffer zone. But we're here tonight just looking for yeah, okay. initial support. Uh, to know that this is something that we can continue in conversation with buyers, uh, community, community development, and uh, the CAO. 
Well, I mean, I think anything that gets uh, housing built faster um, without making it more complicated and difficult, and I think it's at 18 units, Dave, uh, yep. uh, anytime we can get 18 people that aren't currently housed housed, I think in this environment, you know, we need to do whatever we can do to make that happen. So, so no, I'm 100% in support, I'm just trying to make sure that we don't eliminate the ability, the future ability for safe passage, for safe pa passage and, and ultimately that subdivision should should the issues that persist there with the expansion of it happen, right? It's it's a it's a bit of a situation. So um but absolutely hundred hundred percent support. I'll be voting in support. Yeah, it's easy, it's easy for me. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, that Mr. Deputy Mayor. No, uh, we discussed a few issues there. Uh, uh, Dave and I before the meeting. Uh, I'm one, as you know, I'm like uh, the mayor. Get her done. The quicker we can get 18 homes with two bedrooms for rent. Yeah. Um, please work with Wendy and their CEOs to end their building. Building the uh, inspectors is going to get a call. No, I'm 100%. Okay. I, I, one more question. Sorry, if I can. How am I going to stop? <laughs> you are the chair. Um, from from our perspective, Dave, I know you know in the past some onerous tasks have happened. Is there like we we wanted? This is achieving a mandate for for this entire council by by creating projects like this. Is there something you know? Is there anything that we can? I know the process has to go the process, but is there anything that we can do to help you get it done faster? Um, I don't think so. We, we, we've had a lot of great meetings. The finance is in place with great clients. Uh, they're, they're unknown, but very busy in your township. Uh, I believe they have close to 100 doors already. Uh, and they're constant. I think they've got another 100 that they drop for me to start working on. Um, Hopefully here. So. Yeah, yeah, no, they focus on the uh, Edward and the uh, And no, many have had amazing conversations and doing good with us. And the CEO's been involved with this, and we've worked with the counties. So we, we I watch, I think, the majority of our issues sort of, you know, just making sure we're not rolling the dice on your support. If we have the head of time, we can start proceeding with that, you know, intent. Yeah, yeah. let's get it on. Yeah. 100%. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, well, I mean, I had a couple of questions. I think you've answered most of them. I mean, I, you know, I worry a little bit about the uh, uh, the water and, and uh, the water systems going through that area, but not necessarily with the parking spaces. I know you know if you dig up a parking space once in a while, that happens, and you just repave it. But I, I worry about where that where, where the garbage depot is. That might create a different problem for you. Um, and you know, I mean, it's 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 our land, and you know, with what the mayor just said about our emergency. Uh, uh, conversation there. I mean, I'm not sure why you wouldn't go further as well to the west, pave that, and then move the garbage further away so that it's easier to access and, and things like that. But, uh, um, you know, and, and I think that's your point. That's, you know, you're still in the design phase, so that's an opportunity for you there. Um, the only other thing I sort of worry a bit about is is that it sounds like you're having some conversation with them already, but the effect on the neighboring property, you know, beside uh, to the east, I guess, uh, particularly. Um, looks like they can all of a sudden have, you know, 18 or well, call it nine people looking at them all of a sudden at random in your backyard. And I'm sure you're aware of that and we'll work with them. But uh, that'd be a concern that I would have um, uh, that I'm sure you guys would handle. But I just want to make sure you're, you're aware of it. Um, and otherwise, uh, like I said, I think that covers it. Um, you know, if you need to see if uh, AC 638 has a lot of property as well, which might be at the back, which seems to be they've actually fenced themselves out of it. So I don't know if you've been communicating with them or not, but uh, there's more opportunity there as well for you as well. I was going to say that. So, so that covers all of my stuff. Yeah, for sure. We drive 638. Uh, yes. We got a bit of a yard happening there. They're not pulling into the part A through the county planner. Um, we looked at actually contacting them to buy that lot 638, expand the market that way before seeking this. Um, the, the refuse is not fixed, uh, but if we are going to look at um, the mayor's suggestion that that be our route, um, we just have to realign the garbage lot, the parking lot. So if you're trying to put everything away from the residents, yeah. and then uh, the apartment, you know, we need, we're meeting in setbacks. Um, so, you know, that could be my. Uh, 
between the LAC main ring guard, but we are proposing uh, fencing, screening, blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, and you will be talking about this later on today as well, I believe. But yeah, number 684. So, all right, I'm sure you'll stick around. Thank, Thank you me. much. Thanks, Dan. Okay, um, on that note, that covers by me. Uh, moving on to number six, uh, to action information discussion items, uh, land and use and planning. So, number 6A1, uh, we're going to be talking about the application for zoning bylaw amendment. Um, for 2084 Dundas Street, uh, Xander Plan, and I believe Tracy Xander Plan, Xander, Xander Plan. <laughs> Tracy Xander is online here as well. Yep, there she is. Back on the streets. Hang on here, thank you. Sometimes we bury our jobs, it happens. <laughs> no, That's all right. <laughs> all right, uh, okay. So uh, on that note, I'm just getting to my notes. Here we go. And uh, so, Wendy, why don't you uh, talk to us a bit about this one? Thank you. Here is a chair. It's still holding 2084 Dundas Street first. So, this is to review application and draft bylaw for the bylaw amendment at 2084 Dundas Street to allow for the conversion of an existing residential unit from the ground floor into four residential units. So, the building will contain a total of 10 residential dwelling units following the proposed conversion. The draft bylaw that's in this agenda package tonight proposes that an apartment dwelling will be included as an additional permitted use for this property. Um, so a committee reviewed the application on September 5th at the Community Hall Community Development Meeting, um, and they directed staff to proceed to schedule a public meeting. A public meeting was held on October 23rd. There have been no comments received from the public or other agencies on this application today. So in this package, we've got a final report that was prepared by our planner and architect, um, the draft bylaw that Luke has also prepared, um, planning rationale that you have seen before, that's from the um, applicant uh, data plan, um, as well as the site plan and a uh, floor plan for the new unit. Okay, great. So we have a recommendation here. Uh, the recommendation reads, the committee recommend that council adopt an amendment to zoning bylaw 2022-37 for the property at 2084 Dundas Street as attached. Uh, okay. Uh, any comments, Mr. Mayor? Am I wrong in thinking we've seen these before? We saw both of them before. I thought we approved yeah. both of them. Before. We approved them to go to a meeting. We've shared with us before. Oh, yeah. Yes, the committee did ask that we come back to the application for discussion, which is our, our normal. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're looking for the recognition on the draft bylaw that's in here. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> I will second with one comment, and, okay. and that it's um, uh, we're on A, right? I think the yes. first one, which is the ten unit one. Um, you know, the only the only comment, and and I think this one's been being used uh, residentially for quite quite some time. Um, and I and I know we just saw 18 units being developed, and that's and that's great. Um, I just always struggle with every time you lose the potential for commercial, you know, commercial development. And I know this one can always could always possibly flip, you know, flip flop and come back as come back as commercial. Um, you know, there there's no chance that what we're approving today. Um, would have been commercial. I don't. I don't think, anyways, with the way it's already being utilized. I think that this probably allows the the uh, owner to to utilize the full property in the best manner possible at this this point. So I, I have no issue um, uh, with it. I just just you know for the record, I just hate not hate. That's not the right word. I just I just struggle seeing you know those those MCRs losing losing the, that that potential for commercial because at some point. At some point, those commercial properties will will have people coming. We won't have anything to, to build. Okay. Okay. Nope. I uh, I I know what what he's saying. I know what they're saying, but I mean, at least it can go back to commercial. Yeah. It's not as if it can be always residential. Something happens, and the shoe shoe company wants to come in, so she could do it. The lady that owns it or whoever keeps it. So we have one. No. I had a comment, but the mayor took it almost word for words. I'm good. Spell your notes, Joe. <laughs> Gotta stop doing that. 
Uh, okay, uh, and I uh, I didn't have any concerns on this one either. I know we talked a bit about it as well. And, and you know, it, the intent of the land is not necessarily for, for housing, but unfortunately, it's, it's what it's become and it is where the need is at. So uh, well, uh, I can appreciate that. So you know, we have a mover and a seconder already. So uh, I guess we'll call it to a motion then, or call it to a vote, pardon me. So all in favor? There you go. That's unanimous. We'll, we'll move that one along. Okay, <laughs> moving on to uh, number number six A two application for zoning of twenty seventy three Dundas Street. Again, this is end the plan. Um, okay, Regent Harris, so we're reviewing application and also a draft bylaw for zoning bylaw number twenty seventy three Dundas Street to allow the purchase of a portion of the commercial space on the ground floor to one resident to form a unit within the existing building. So the committee reviewed this application on August 8th and directed staff to proceed to scheduling a public meeting once the complete application was received. And so through follow-up correspondence with the applicant staff uh, reviewed an updated site plan, parking agreement, and a conceptual floor plan to ensure the space could accommodate each proposed use on the main floor as the commercial space and the residential space. Um, a public meeting was held on October 23rd. We have not received any comments from the public or other agencies on this application to date. So um, in the agenda package, there is a planning report that was prepared by Nova Tech. They have also proposed to prepare a draft bylaw for consideration. Um, the planning itself was an agenda plan that you've seen before, um, as well as the site plan and the conceptual floor plan that was prepared by the Thank you very much. Um, all right. Uh, and we did not need the recommendation to have a foreign house. Well. No, I can read it around if she has it. If you don't mind, because I got to find it. Yeah. So. so the recommendation is that committee brings on each path to adopt an amendment to the zoning bylaw 2077 for the crossover at 2073 Dundas Street as attached. Thank you very much. What would you say? Same, same basic yeah. comment as, as last time. Uh, only I will, I will. Um, uh, thank you know uh, Tracy and the owner and and staff for being able to work out a compromise to to allow for the potential for some commercial so that we don't lose all of the potential for commercial so so this accommodates the need for the owner helps make the building you know more affordable to to keep you know keep the rent being paid while still allows the development if that development comes along it may take a while but but it still allows for that potential for development on the front on the streetscape uh, portion of it. So I think it it manages sort of the the potential and it manages the needs of, of the ownership and it shows good flexibility on the amount of council staff and, and the willingness of everybody else to bend a little to try to help during the housing crisis. So so I guess my comment would be well done to everyone involved. Thank you. And I'm happy with it. Councillor Martel. I'm good. Uh, no, I'll second it. Okay, perfect. Uh, just quickly, I guess, uh, uh, Tracy. So I'm trying to figure out, and, and I know it goes into maybe the realm of where the, uh, uh, you know, the, um, uh, the the building staff would be involved. But where are the exit doors for this apartment? Is it near that hallway, near between the kitchen and the bedroom, or is it uh, elsewhere? Uh, that's a good question. I'm just going to look on my other screen here and see if I think you have a floor plan. I'm just going to jump to that as well. Um, where is it? Yeah, so I, yeah, I, I think the exit to the residential unit is on the, I'm going to say the south side or the kind of the back end of the building opposite to Dundas Street. Uh, Victoria Freeborn on behalf of the the development uh, company is also on the call. I don't know if she knows the specifics of this building, if she can answer that, but that's what I believe. Um, yeah, I can jump in. You guys were asking where are both doors? Yeah. Where's the access? Yeah. Okay, so I don't know the name of the street, but I've been there myself. So there's Dundas and then there's a cross street. That cross street will have the main front door to the re rear apartment. And then at the back side, uh, where Tracy said is going to be the emergency exit. Okay, perfect. That's great. Thank you very much. No problem. Uh, otherwise, uh, we, you know, we've had uh, seen this before. We had some conversation about it. I'm, I'm happy as well. So uh, 
uh, let's call it to a vote then. So uh, it's been uh, moved by the mayor and seconded by uh, the uh, deputy mayor. So all in favor? Unanimous. Move that one along as well. Great. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, McMurray and and, uh, and Tracy. We're really glad you were able to ask and answer questions, and uh, we're excited to see some more uh, residents going into the area. So thank you. Uh, Great. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, may I just ask when uh, the council meeting might be that these bylaws would come forward? November 27th is the date that that will happen. 27th. Very good. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice evening. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Okay. Um, so moving on to number 6A3, uh, which is now the discussion for baseload, baseload power. Uh, they're seeking municipal support for the battery energy storage projects. So... Um, I guess we wanted to do well as part of our habit. I don't know. I think we talked a little bit today. I don't, I don't, you know, but I think we're probably fine. <laughs> um, so, uh, now on page seven, or sorry, page 80 is where um, the draft resolution uh, starts, by the way, for anybody following along. And um, it was page 80 of 113, yeah. Uh, and so, um, this basically starts there. I think it goes another. No, nope, actually, the next thing is just the page to talk about it from the ministry. Um, anyway, so uh, there you said mentioned earlier. By the way, I just want to make sure we get this clear. But there were some things you didn't have information on, or you didn't fill in. Is that right? Uh, uh, through the chair, it continued to be part of the. Oh, okay. no, no, I thought it was something more dire than that. Was, I don't think they have that as well. So. So, okay, uh, all right, any discussion, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor? Uh, we beat this one to death pretty good. <laughs> yep. uh, you know, public meeting, if they've done anything uh, possible, and like I said, they answered the questions that are at an open house meeting really, really well for the ten people. They all went away are, are, are very happy, so. Um, I have no issues. Do we need to move it or just to? Just to approve it. I could, we could, be, before we go to moving it that way, uh, it, the, uh, the CBF matters to me, like, and, and I think that if, if that can, is it included, is that letter included that, that Jonathan spoke to with, with the municipal support notice? Uh, so, uh, this is the wording that ISO requires. Yeah. Um, so I think Jonathan indicated his will, his will to to include that. So if if that will is there, and you know he expressed that during his delegation, then then could we add that to 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 the list? And I'm um, happy to put my support behind it with that. But I'd like that included if possible. Yeah. No. Um... I can introduce you a little bit back. Was that the passing discussion you were going to have, uh, uh, Jonathan? Is that correct? Yeah, so what we can do is uh, maybe then I can work on the language to add to that. As long as I have it. Okay. Yeah, it's a relatively simple one page solution. It doesn't need to go both ways from our side of view. And uh, we can add it to the document, and uh, I can share that. And that so that language is the one we uh, perfect. Anyhow, okay, great. Thank you very much. Yeah, put that all right. Okay. Uh, Councilor Martel, do you have anything to add? I do not. I'm fully willing to support this. Uh, honestly, I still question a business model where one buys back their own product at a at a premium. I don't see how that's sustainable, but I am totally behind supporting this. Yeah, well, you know, and it's funny, you know, Councilor Martel, I had the same thoughts myself. And let's say, you know, we've been talking for years about how we, uh, you know, we, we, when we have too much capacity, we sell to Quebec and New York, and then we buy it back essentially for, you know, I heard, I don't know what the exact number is, but I've heard twice to 10 times as much. I don't know the number, but it's it's an expensive proposition. So might as well save as much of it as you can. So that's the, the, the you know. I, I certainly, that, certainly wouldn't fly down at the boneyard. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right, uh, perfect. Okay, so uh, with, with no other questions then, um, do we want to have a motion then to uh, 
uh, bring this along to uh, to us, or do we even need that at this point? I think we can bring it along, can't we? Can you share your more than able to make a motion just like this to talk to the council? We already have the draft as well as what we can do to do that and consult with Jonathan. So between that and staff, we're able to work with them. We and that'll come back to 27, of course. So, yeah. It'll be dealt with at the 27th, though, so that we have, he has, if we're good. going to support and has that support, we can move move along. Yeah, okay. Um, so, resolution and no resolution. So, if we move on. Be yeah, I think draft motion be brought forward to council with additional information to be brought to be prepared. Yeah, and I think I'll support exactly what you just said. So I'll move I'll move what what the clerk just just said because I think it's important that that we show our will and that we show our support and and that we want to continue to work with the providers to move important infrastructure and energy projects along. So it's as important as housing. So. Perfect. So I have a mover in I'll the second the mayor. Mayor. <laughs> Seconded by the deputy mayor. All in favor? Okay, perfect. We'll see that on the 27th. All right. Um, moving on to 6A, number four. Um, that's a discussion on an easement request over township property in favor of 608 County Road number two. Oh, we knew we'd see it again as well. All right. Uh, I don't think we need to get introduced to this one again. I think we've got all the preamble. So, uh, I'll just open it up for discussion then at this point. Um, so, uh, Professor Martel, do you have any uh, uh, comments you want to talk to at this point? I do not. Thank you. Deputy Mayor? Uh, no, I'm just uh, Mr. Annabelle. I am supporting your proposal. Go get it. Do we need a motion or no? Mr. Chair, no, I don't think there's um, an expectation of a motion, just discussion for the council to understand um, if there is support uh, for an easement, if, if the zoning bylaw amendment um, was to be approved down the road. So if this is a additional question for the entire review that the committee um, would consider uh, as part of this discussion, um, that yeah. would be helpful in the design. Right, and the, the committee discussions, the, I'll, I'll say the questions that uh, you could consider is if the applicant were successful in obtaining a zoning bylaw amendment to address areas such as non compliance as the proposal, would committee support the use of the road allowance? Um, you know, and we've talked about that. If there's any discussion on that, please uh, jump in. I know that on both sides. I, I would, I would, I don't, I don't, but I would like. I would like to know. I would like to know if there's, like, what we think, because I mean, with Lockwood, like, am I allowed to say those? Am I allowed to say <laughs> Lockwood owns the subdivision, so I'm allowed to say it, right? <laughs> there's an impact, potential impact, by losing. Sorry, I'm <laughs> fuzzy all of a sudden. Um, there's a potential impact to to losing that road allowance from an emergency standpoint if we if we allow it to be full full parking and there isn't a way for Lockwood to work out another access point to the other the department so I just don't want to say yes to allowing this to be a full parking lot that we can't access with emergency vehicles and Lockwood have no possible way of ever developing the back half of the metal lane subject I just hate this decision to do this to to prevent and landlock them to, to ever be able to develop. And I mean, I'd like to. It's not covered anywhere in here, and I'd like to know that that's not going to happen before I say yes. I'm, you know, I've spoken to it. I'm 100 percent supportive of it. But you know, it is our lane right now, and <clears throat> if we need to access it, we can. So. Uh, Mr. Chair, I think those are good considerations for design that we can look at through the site planning process. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and I know, I mean, I know the, the you know, the 
designer as well, and I know the flexibility that Dave brings to the table with um, his willingness to to adapt to to whatever the need is. So, and I know he's willing to do that. So, so one hundred percent supportive. I just want to make sure that we don't don't lose what we need. We may need to be able to develop the rest of that because I mean, if we make that decision, it renders Corey's project useless or not being able to develop it at all. That's that's wrong. Well, so, he can't come in there anyway. Oh, I see. You're saying because of their apartment building and it's a parking lot. We own that street. How does he get to the street? Because you can't get to the to the railroad. So I'm not sure where you're going with that. I'm not talking about developing it as a useful road. I'm talking about if we don't develop it as a useful road, we remove the emergency egress as a condition of the plan subdivision. <laughs> It's a condition, the emergency exit through Gill Street was a condition that we as a council, the last council, put on that subdivision. Right, Gill Street. Right, right. You can't develop because of that right now. So if the only option for development is to remove that, at some point that that may happen. Otherwise, we don't have the ability to do that. And the only, we have already seen through emergency exer exercise that the only way to get in and out of this place would be through that access point. I hope that it never comes to that and we actually are able to access through Gill, but I don't want this decision to, to limit us. Well, there's no, no possibilities. I think the solution would be to come up with the use statement that the uh, the land use agreement makes, but the real land that I spoke to earlier shifting that 60 or lane way through, um, if it ever did become aware of those Mandatory full time use to the real line of parking to be there for. And that's probably be a secondary easement for EDR that the township could then have your path traveling when it travels. Yeah, that's the potential flexibility. I think that's just that's, it's going to be the only I would never, we yeah. never get to that point, but I just don't want to eliminate Corey's possibility for development. I mean, it may come, well, I know why, but it may come to the removal of that commitment to push that forward. So we'll just put a sub clause if you let us have that part. Your delegation's over. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, 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 I just, I think I have to express that. Yeah. For, uh, Councilor Martelli, do you have any on that uh, that one comment about uh, supporting use for the road allowance? Okay. Uh, and then the other questions, I guess, were uh, it's noted that the site plan proposes uh, that the use of both sides of the road of the road allowance. What portion of the road allowance would would the committee be supportive of? And have that conversation. It's very similar to the, the first question. I think we talked about that. Uh, and uh, the request indicated that the land will be used for parking, amenity, area, and an area for garbage. Are specific uses yeah. supported and not supported? I don't know that answer though. So, um, are the specific uses of garbage and parking allowed on, our, on, on the easement committee? Is that the question? Yeah. Okay. You would probably ask me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, to be fair, we did file the easement agreement to be written for that. On the on the um, if there's this period of infrastructure, I'm going to say so. The agreement would be written so that if we needed to access that infrastructure, that we probably aren't going to be responsible for repaving the road and maybe reinstating it. Maybe we've had conversations with the applicant about this as well. Um, uh, the waste disposal unit we understand would be movable if we needed to access underneath. Uh, there. So um, there's just considerations we need to make that we can still access that other garbage structure. And as we mentioned before, um, land use can have a land use component, which is proposed to the other um, residential use. So, um, so just wanted to give some thoughts on are there uses that we're supportive of or not supportive of. Um, just to see that sure. Yep, yep, sounds good. All right, so any comments from anybody? Let's get up in here, everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Martel, you're okay? No questions, okay. Let's do there. Any comments about that? All right, so that's good. So uh, I guess uh, you got a few um, from from council at this point. So all right, that's it from the committee at this point, right? All right, that's all right.
Uh, okay, great. Um, I think we had a good discussion there, and I uh, and, uh, appreciate you bringing this forward to us. And uh, you know, I think uh, I can probably speak for all of us to say we're excited to see some, uh, uh, you know, a, a concept that brings more houses into the area, more residents into the area, and, uh, uh, and that, uh, you know, uh, we'd love to work with you. Hopefully, you have a, uh, a good relationship, a good, network, a good working relationship with you to solve some of these small issues we're trying to talk through. So, thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Okay. So moving then on to uh, uh, 6A5, which is action implementation of the official plan consent policies, hydrological assessment, and terrain analysis. And this is on. Um, yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, this is on page uh, 98 of 115 is where it starts off. Uh, for those following along. All right. Why don't you bring us uh, her desk? Thank you. Right there. So, just to get the draft in the session, we began council on October 10th. That was scheduled an open house meeting and the statutory public meeting for November 2020. During the review process, you might recall, our planners recommended an additional revision to make sure that it was supported with appropriate servicing and supported with the provincial policy statement. And uh, MECP 254 and 255 guidelines. Uh, committee has asked the department to provide a geological assessment for sharing houses to be built in a separate policy rather than within the official plan. Um, I've included the bill wording that was endorsed by committee on section 7111 of the official plan. I recognize there were other uh, amendments made that were supportive of this, but I thought that would be um, relevant to reference here. Um, so for committee's consideration, a draft resolution is attached that would provide guidance for when a high school for assessment and scan analysis would be considered a reasonable condition for a separate application. Um, so in summary, and that draft resolution is attached to this report on page 101. So the guidelines state that um, the study can be scoped, meaning the amount of work can be scaled to the development that's proposed. The study would be required when the lot is all three of these undeveloped, requires private or partial individual on site servicing, and is under one hectare. Um, the study would also be required when the lot is within an area that has a higher risk of water quality or quantity impact. So that's for the area that's within an influence uh, area of a disposal site um, or an other area that would make it uh, sensitive to what water quality conversation. Um, the study must be prepared by a qualified professional and in accordance with community guidelines. And where recommendations are provided to the report, they may be implemented through the development agreement. These agreements are registered on title and available for future homeowners. So if the attached resolution is approved by the council, it could be included with the official plan amendment application to the county that would help demonstrate conformance with the provincial policy statement and NACP 253 guidelines. Um, the policy implications. The CPS permits individual on site sewage and water services um, when municipal or private cleanup services are not available, provided that site conditions are suitable for the long term provision of such services with no negative impacts. Um, the definition in the CPS for negative impacts for this policy is negative impacts to be assessed for environmental study, including hydrogeological or water quality impact assessments and reports of provincial CPS. So I've also included GPCD's report. Um, we have a hydrogeologist that was also on the September meeting, so it's not new information, but also thought it was important and relevant to the reference here. So, draft policy or draft resolution for hydrogen. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let the fun begin. <laughs> what else? Oh, no. Okay. Um, all right. So, bullet point two the study would be required. The study would be required when the lot is undeveloped, requires private or partial individual on-site servicing is under one hectare. So every single property that's between 0.4 and one hectare needs a hydrogen study. It's undeveloped and it can be on hydrogen. Which is, which is a way of slipping away from <laughs> um, may be required. We, we asked for the words may be required to be to be put in and the bullet point two ensures that it's put in and i don't like that 
Mr. Chair, I thought that was the goal of making a decision. I thought that in meeting that that was decided that the strong language shall be required to be removed from the district plan and not be um, outlined in a separate policy. But but the strong language is still there because it says it would be re the study would be required. It doesn't say that it may be required. It says that it would be required. <laughs> so I thought my whole intention was to lessen the requirement and, and only do it when, when it, we felt the situations outside of that lot size required it to be done. That's where the original may be required part. I thought that that's... I thought we had already settled on this. This seems like we we changed the wording to May, but then but then later on we're we're saying that it would be required, not may be required. I felt like we were um, uh, following the city's direction by not having problems in the initial plan. And I understood the direction to be to include it in the policy. Um, to share, I'm not sure how we can meet the provincial guidelines without having that language in some sort of uh, policy. So if I can again, so I've read, again, I'm going to go back to Rio Lakes. It's the one I always go back to. I've read every part of Rio Lakes official plan. It's approved. It's the most, the latest approval of any official plan written, written by their in-house planners. And it was approved at the United Counties and it works. The only reference to a hydro B study in there is that they may require it. Not that one would be required, not that one has to be required. And it actually even states that they'll approve lots smaller than 0.4, yeah. but only the ones smaller than 0.4 would require. Um, Rito Lake has a separate policy that says they would require um, for lots. I believe it's actually point three after the following the average um, that that's not what it actually says in I'm, I've got it up now. It's not actually what it says. It it says anything smaller than would point four would be required. But but larger than that may be required. And it's under their staff's terms, like whether or not they do that. And it's approved. That that's in their official planning event? Yeah. That? Yeah, if the but the CDC was putting it. There's another document they said on top of that. It's yeah. I think it's important. Yeah. Well, we have an official plan actually required for zero point eight. I think I can just scroll down the official plan, but it's it's. Hey, you have a thing. Uh, no, that's not up. I'm not going to have to scroll down. Um, notice also provided a a chart from one of our earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, well, but I think. If I can cut you off for a sec, I, I, I think that we get that Novatech doesn't want us to, to do or that doesn't want to support us in the way that we wish to move forward. I, I understand where they're coming from. What I'm trying to do is say that there is documentation that the United Counties, who is our approval body, has already brought forward and approved. And we're trying to base what we're doing off of off of what they're, they seem to be the one that has the most flexibility in this and it puts you know us at a competitive disadvantage and and i understand where where steve and, and jordan are coming from they're doing their job and i and i get that that's part of of their job we just we just want to try to keep it as most flexible as we can sounds like one's blocked um <laughs> you know that it's all it's it's it. <laughs> <laughs> or I want to try to keep as much flexibility in in this. That was the whole idea of, of trying to shrink it down. I don't want to lose that flexibility. so it's similar language to ours that doesn't 
and we really try to implement the proper policy that we're part of the issue. And then we see what we have proposed. Um, that would talk more specifically about one of the I'm going to leave the entire look at part of that again, but okay. Uh, Councilor Martel, are you still there? I think we had a bit of a weird thing back on. Yes, sir. I don't know if we are or not. Okay. Uh, anyways, uh, Deputy Mr. Deputy Mayor, do you have any comments? Yeah, no, I, I, I don't want anything to do with it if it's in there. Um, I like the red May when we had services that we may be required to demonstrate the law can we add in service for long term. Um, and then we go down and say we have to. It's defeating what I what I want. <clears throat> okay, so just and and I know it's not supposed to be debated, and I apologize. Yeah. But if we go to page one hundred one a of theirs, mm -hmm. and and we read one hundred one a, how does that how does that apply to it? Oh, well, you take it just ready? Uh, the trail of salt. I guess I'm not familiar with the definition of salt. I'm talking to my back to you. If you go to our community, I can read it for us. I think 101, uh, on page 101, uh, A is talking about situations, what may be required, or situations where a lot of time is not going to report for an affair. Um, I guess what would be required if there was a lot higher for something that you're proposed? Because a lot of them, it's just saying that there may be situations where a lot could be smaller, but you might be taking it and have to do a certain amount to support that. Um, but if you look at the consent policy on page 102, it's telling you that if the lot is less than two acres, that the higher situation can be. I don't think we have a problem with the word "may." I think we have a problem with "shall." Like, yeah. like would be required. <coughs> it's just that one word may be required, and it's important, right? Because <coughs> this one doesn't. It just says that, that they're going to have to do a well test, which we have to do anyway, and and that they're that they may require if this if the circumstances apply but it doesn't say they would be required yeah. we're going to get stuck on these words but they're going to matter a lot because because if somebody comes in with one that's 0. 0.6 and wants to do it and and r says would be required then they have to do a hydro g study if there's no need for them to do a hydro G study on a 0.6 piece of property, why would we require them to do it? That's, and if it says may, then if you look at it and say there's no reason to do that, as long as you have a well test that shows that you can adequately supply yourself with water, why would we add another piece of a layer of red tape for them to have to go? I think that's the whole crutch of what, what, we've, been, what we've been trying to, to do. So is it, there's multiple levels of a hydrogen study, though, is it correct? But there's there's a call it an assessment, and then there's a broader one. Is that not how I've understood this all? Uh, I think in general, it would be, be scope to the level of the development as to whether or not they had to um, go well on the site. If there are five wells on the site, does that the water? Like it, it depends on what the size of the well is. I just comment on the, the, the draft resolution. It goes the entire very strong language. It says that we have to report, and now I intend to implement the draft, draft resolution. It says, um, I'm on one, two, three, four, five paragraphs down, and that's not the draft that I've been following. For oh, sorry, what page is that? Page uh, 101, draft is draft. Um, and that council directs that under following circumstances, the scope train analysis and or high geological report demonstrating the proposal will not have an adverse effect. 
upon the land of Hoka is a reasonable condition of settlement approval under the following circumstances. I suppose that doesn't say that we have to accept it every time. Right? So it would be helpful, helpful to have council acknowledge that in those circumstances, it's a reasonable um, condition. In, in those severance, um, in those severance instances, will they come before this committee? Like, is that staff's going to recommend, you'll recommend that a hydrology study be done? We don't have to accept that as a condition of severance, though, right? So, so ultimately, if we said yes to what's there, and you brought it to us, and we felt differently than what the staff recommendation was, we could ask to have it removed. Chair? Uh, yes, the the issue we might come across there is that normally these studies are um, application submission requirements, so they have to have them before they could get the application to show that the application is not going to be it. So they could keep the application until like, after the application is made. If the applicant thought that it was an unreasonable request, they could. Um, uh, make the application at the time of the or did they could make the application at the time? And so, do we know what the average cost would be of a hydrogen study? Like, do we, like, if we're making this part of, of every possible lot that, that goes from one acre down to, or from, excuse me, from one hectare down to one acre, like 0.4, if it becomes, because that's ultimately what this is doing, is if they have to and you recommend it, then they have to do it before we ever see it, whether we would have wanted it or not. So so how much are we adding <laughs> to the cost of having a smaller law? That's what I'd like to know. Like, is it $500? Is it $10,000? Like, I don't know. <laughs> That's a concern. And, and, and excluding the well, obviously, because that would be required regardless of whether they build it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um. We did ask Jacob to do this question, and your answer was that it depends on a lot of factors. <laughs> so the, the range is going to be quite large. I believe they said it was it could be between two and six, but it also could be as high as eighteen thousand dollars. But it could be two to six thousand dollars, maybe it's a single lot seven. But it, was, it like it's so, so it, it, it depends on so many factors. You have to drill a well, and as the chair had mentioned, like that does add to the value of the property because the well is built on that property. Uh, it doesn't develop before, and then you have the um, the well attached. So it's um it's going to vary a, a lot depending on the, the circumstances. So the guarantee we're adding to to guaranteeing we're adding to to be able to to get where they need to be to have that smaller lot of lot size. We're adding two thousand to a seven thousand. Yeah. Because if it's one hectare, they don't have to get the hydrogen study. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Um, yeah, there's no, I was trying to figure out if there's some sort of a, a, a compromise position that could be had, you know, for some sort of a, you know, there is. reasonable, well, well a reasonable um, analysis tool to say whether it, you know, would need it or not. Yeah, but we already I just threw this to us, you know, we didn't want that in there. <laughs> I get that. I get that. And, and, and I'm so all in favor of the why we decided to get to on this. the same area you want to make you use. Now you don't you have to have that. We didn't want that in the first place. We fought for that. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm still saying we, we fight, we want to make it in the lots as cheaply as possible. I just, you know, I, I kept coming back to what I said on day one. You know, I'm in favor of it, but how do I make? How do we make sure that if we, you know, if there's at all any risk, we have some sort of assessment tool, um, which is what I was hoping to see on a, a part of this document as well would be an assessment to say, you know, um, you know, there's some conditions where you know where it's not necessarily required, and I don't know if we have a way to do that. But I think that's that's the conversation. But you know, I'd love to see some conditions where it may not be required because you know, no other property in the area or things like that that, that help it along, right? So, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, do we want to continue to talk on this? Do we want to, I mean, uh, I think we're probably, 
Is there no media free right now? I believe Joe is not with us. Joe is not with us anymore. Uh, if you guys want to propose a change, um, you know, um, you know, please. I'm, 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 I'm not voting on that. Okay. No, sorry. I'm only one. Did you want to put some words to it? Well, something? by not voting on it, though, just delays it. And it doesn't change it. So if we want to change it, we need to change it. Otherwise, we're going to be kicking and kicking and kicking and kicking. And we're really kicking and kicking. I know, I know, but and I get your frustration. I understand it. But kicking it again isn't really going to solve it, right? If we're going to solve it, take what you want, take it out of it, and move it. Then we can have a full discussion of council when it when it gets there. And if it gets turned down because we are being too aggressive, then it gets turned back down. And it comes back to us again, and we, we have to put something else in it. Did you put proposals from there? Or? I don't know where to, I don't know where to actually start to remove it. So, so to the development coordinator, like the way that the bylaw is written, you don't believe that the the background information really applies. Is that is that the way that you said it? Right. Um, sorry. So, in the um, in my, my summary of the resolution, mm -hmm. just to make it, I, I guess just to give a summary of how how you would apply that resolution. But I so the I think here in the discussion now, I'd rather you look at the draft resolution and so change the words there. Okay. So so correct me if I'm wrong here. The only part that goes in the official plan is the part that says man. Right, in seven one word. Like, yeah. is the in summary part part of the, what's going in? It's not right. It it yeah. ends at the at the word constraints. Am I correct? Correct. So that that section that is being amended, that that is addressing. It, it ends at the word constraints. For in the official plan. Yes. So the red is what's being added to break out or what's being taken away, and that's where we change it to the word um may. Right. So, so your so your in the summary change. part, right? It's is the part point. that we have the issue with. it's not it's not the the way that the official plan part is written i don't think because it says may be required correct the committee has already endorsed that uh official plan and then right. we're going to have a public meeting on the 20th yeah. and that's what's going to form part of our application to the it, county alone think where we're struggling moving this forward yeah. is that in your summary portion you're saying it would be required the summary is a summary of the five physiological assessment draft resolution that's on page 101. So perhaps maybe instead of reading that summary, um, let me know what you would like to change for that draft resolution. Um, almost, you know, in the where it says and that council directs in that paragraph there you know if we were to put something in there that gave staff discretion um, is that reasonable can we knock out on that on that second one too as where is provincial policy statement because a negative impact should be assessed could we say maybe assess? I, I, and take well, it let, let, I think it says should be assessed, doesn't it? In the PPS? Can we change that? Well, we, we can't change the PPS. Because Pardon? We, we can't change the PPS. You could take that section out of your resolution. Right? But can, can we just change that word? Should be, can we maybe assess? Or is that is that part of the provincial policy statement? Or the policy statement says negative impact should be assessed through environmental studies, including high school up for a water quality impact assessment in accordance with this. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm thinking the answer might lie somewhere in the end of that statement. And, and uh, yeah. Yeah. 
it's almost like there's a system. I think we talked about with, with, with Mayor talked about as well is that you know and, and should we say should should you know should staff you know say we need to do a hydro G study? Um, is there is there a mechanism for them to to you know uh, maybe get the second opinion? I guess if that may be a council, right? That's that's what the mayor was highlighting or alluding to there. I don't know if there's any way we can word around this one, but I mean I'm sure there is. Any ideas around there, anybody? So, so the crux of everything is, and that council directs, right? Under the following circumstances, that we have to do a scope train analysis, no matter what, and a hydro G, no matter what, if the lot size is going to be less than one hectare. But that, that is, and that, and that's what it says. But if we go back to our official plan, it says may. There it says it has to be. It's a requirement that that we do. Am I wrong in thinking that? No ideas. I'm asking that's a question to staff. With it. Draft official plan amendment says that um, the hydrological testing statement may be required, mm -hmm. and that resolutions implement that policy, which say it would be required um, only the lot undeveloped, requires special required spaces, and the lot cost being not in the Right. And if we, if we don't it's say like something that, different than what the official plan is. It, I mean, I get it. I get that the word may appeases us in, in there, but that, that paragraph doesn't because it says, and that council directs that under the following circumstances, a scope training analysis and hydro G report demonstrating that it will not have adverse impact. So, uh, and, and that third condition is that it's less than one, than one hectare. There's no may in that. If it were less than one hectare, the required to tell us it wouldn't be required. If it were less than one hectare, but it's on municipal services, it would be required. It would be all clear sources. It would need to be all three of these things to be required? Yeah. Maybe we should put that in there. Um, So if it's a brand new lot, it, it's going to be rural. <clears throat> so it's going to require a well. And it's less than one, or it's less than 2.47 acres. We're saying now that it has to have a terrain analysis and a hydrogen. Yeah. Um, can we take out that, uh, and whereas the provincial policy statement provides a negative impact, it should be assessed through environmental studies, including the hydrological water quality impact. Can we take that right out? So, remove it? I, I'm trying to take that out. I mean, the provincial policy statement still does exist regardless of whether you leave it there or not, right? Yeah. If you remove those reactive policies or not, the provincial policy statement. So those are our policies that are provided to us for space or mm -hmm. not. So building on the yeah. So we remove that and still. So the whereas is still fine. The, 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 PBS, the whereas is still fine. It's it's they're they're not the issue. The the issue is the offer, right? That's that's the issue. It's it's the wording of that. Of that of that paragraph that I'm talking about, that's the issue. Yeah. And, I mean, if if and further down, I mean, when the lot. The, the, the problem that I struggle with is if we decide to make this uh, this uh, a may a may instead of a, a should or need to have all three conditions. You know, all three conditions didn't require it. What's the the scientific or the procedural process that you follow? Because it it, it can't be you know. Uh, um, I mean, I say it can't be at the discretion of staff. I don't want to put staff in the position to make it at the discretion of staff. There's got to be a sign to it, right? Um, I 
think uh, I'm going to say we are not going to be able to decide on this one tonight. So we'll uh, we'd like to push it off. To, so we're going to kick it again. Well, unless you guys want to come up with some wording there, we can talk about what we did. We can't sit here all day and talk about the same sentence and not do anything about it. I, I, I mean, I just, yeah, put that out there. You know, when I saw it, I was very happy in, in the um, in in the purpose of it, you know, implementing the official plan by May B. And then you read down and then when you read to the official plan it falls straight back in there. We have to do it. I don't understand why we have to do every one. It bugs me. Like I said, I, I think there's maybe conditions where it would need to be done, but I'm not sure what they look like. And you know, if, if you could figure those out, uh, you know, like if it, if 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 they're splitting off a second property, they did they did a split, you know, two or three years ago. I don't know why they do another hydroelectric site when it's specifically already one that one in the last ten or fifteen years because there's been a lot of development to happen, right? So, or in some not significant development. But I'm not an expert on water. I think I don't think we need to I think. Fair what, what I will agree with you on is that I don't think between the three of us we're going to be able to wordsmith the operative portion of this and then and therefore be it resolved. I don't think it's going to get resolved, and I don't think that we implement under the official. We're not plan. we're not the ones that should write this, right? And I and I don't think and I don't think that that says what we want it to say. And and I think where we're struggling is is giving the direction to to staff to, to get it to say what we want it to say. And and I think if we go away, I think it, it's pretty. I think it's pretty clear that this isn't it. Um, but I think if we maybe there's a, a mechanism where we can where we can work on this during the next month so that we can get it to say what we. Ultimately, what we need to say, or what we, what we want to put forward, to see if we'll get approved in the second. Is there a way that we can do that? So, let me just outline the conditions we're talking about. We'd like it to, you know, essentially not always, which it seemingly is, be a you know anything less than one hectare um, needs a hydrological study. And and the and the analysis, right? So we're looking for something that doesn't automatically, essentially automatically necessitate that. I'm also looking for something at least on my end, and I don't know if this has for the rest of council, but I'd like to see some sort of a uh, uh, a procedural outline uh, that describes the process you would go through to determine whether or not they need one or not need one based on those conditions we talked about. Is there anything else that I missed? To, to be, like, are you asking for some specific examples of why one would be needed? I, I, well, I think it's a this, like I said, there's there's going to be conditions where it's not needed, essentially. Right? Like, you know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, I want to sometimes it's just obvious, right? Why it would be, not why it's not. I would I would look at it from a different angle. Well, We're asking too. for it to not be not be required. So for me, I would want to know an instance and in why it's required. <laughs> what. What exactly makes it so that it that it has to be so, a terrain analysis? I get the highway two discussion when those lots go down to the river and the, the banks may not be stable and, and that sort of stuff when you're allowing a smaller lot size that, that it makes sense hundred percent. But a field that's been there for a hundred years that is just a small lot, a one acre lot, one acre lot's a big lot. It's not a little lot, let's be real. Yeah. It's high and dry. I just don't think there's lots of instances that you don't need. Well, so to that point, you know, and I guess we'll get back to the discussion. I think we'll have to move this along, like I said. But you know, um, the only condition where it happens is if it meets all three of these conditions that are here, essentially. Otherwise, if it doesn't meet all three of these, then it doesn't mean a hydro just study. That's what we're saying. But you know, that that basically means if it is if it's if it's developed, if it's undeveloped, in other words, if there's no other structure on there that already has plumbing, essentially, you need it. You need it. Um, if there's a, uh, uh, is it service of the well? We need it. We're talking about, we're talking about real property. So most, if not all, real two and a half acres, acres in size. And less than two and a half acres, whether we're talking about one acre, right? So, so the problem is, it's, you know, 
know, all of these, you know, are there. And in many cases, all of them are going to be the conditions we're talking about. So, anyways, I, you know, I don't know if that's given you enough to talk. Um, you know, and see if you can figure a little bit of that out um, with, with the plan or write a single plan. I, you know, give it one more month. Let's just have it on for an item, maybe even just the way that it is now. So, the one more month, unfortunately, I was going to get to as yeah. but uh, this is the last CDC meeting until February, so we have the two of them. So if, if the chair will indulge, then, then we can do it. Then the so the last, this is the last CDC meeting? For February, yeah. So is that one in December? No, yeah, no, 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 no. January, right? Or December, January. Well, because December is a shorter month for us, we can take the CDC month for the day. Wow. Out there. Okay, but well, we can still do it. 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 Okay, I'll, I'll go. I we kicked the can this much. Let's get it once more. One more month. Let's get it. Any items that are not addressed where we do not have our community development meeting in December and January are not going to be done. We don't just start. Yes, no, I appreciate that. I just yeah. 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 So let's continue yeah. on the administration. Yeah. In, in from the courts. Court. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, let's give let's yeah. give direction. Well, what we want. Let's give direction. Like I think I just gave the direction we talked about. Uh, uh, we need some conditions that it's not always or fair. What what Hector below essentially these conditions are met. Uh, and like I said, um, you know, my opinion anyway is that you know we want to put them out separately. Uh, one direction would be that. So. Because I don't know if you're all going to agree with my procedural decision tree can oppose that, but I do think we need something so that it's not just, um, you know, uh, at the mood of somebody. I just want to know why. That's all. Why do we need? Why do we need? An example of why we need it, not why we don't need it. That's all I want. We're going to add it as a condition. I want to know exactly what the parameter is, not when we're going to take it off. So procedure that <laughs> leads to meeting. Hydro G and green session. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's not too much. Got some work with it. Sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. To the, uh, to the CDC, is that, do you have enough information to try and put something out of that? Uh, I'm sure my okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, okay. So we're gonna move this on. This was a uh, uh, this was an action though, so I guess I need an action to defer on this one. It's not moved and it's not second. Not moved and not second. Perfect. Okay. So then we'll uh, we'll move on to that one then. Uh, there is no work and economic development section. There is a plain recreation, and then we have uh, a very patient uh, recreation coordinator here to discuss the uh, update and upcoming events. So, uh, Rachel. Sorry. On Sunday, October 29th, we can get to the first recreation association and an internal education page. Both include a sample sheet and a book about the community. The sample sheet by the box program has received the first support production of the presentation. The second set is accepted at the end on November 7th. The first session of the Alexander Club takes place on Tuesday evening, November 7th. And the second session will be in January. Um, on December 10th, the council will be hosting a free holiday for the afternoon at the Brownstone Hall, the Children's Hall of Ages. And the center will be in attendance for the state event on Friday, December 15th, afternoon the November, and Sunday, December 17th, at the Central Arena. Free holiday seating will be available at both centers of community. All parts of the program and events are shared through the message of the community founders and event organizers 
That's that's good. Thank you very much. Oh. Any uh, any comments, Mr. Mayor? Um, yeah, to the staff, and it's it's not so much a um, a programming question. It's more an organizational uh, question. Um, Rachel, I, uh, and to the coordinator, sorry. I know you attended the trunk retreats both in Johnstown and in, and in Cardinal, and they were they were well attended. And I thank you for getting a soccer ball for my son. Um, the my question is isn't necessarily to you; it's to staff in general. Um, when it comes to to community groups and community not for profits, I'm assuming these are both not for profits. Is there is there an accountability or a financial accountability? Like we call Sarah collects money, I'm assuming, to do different projects in the community. Do we, do they, are they required to account to anyone as a not-for-profit how they, how they utilize the funds that they collect? Does that make sense? Am I wording that? Like, is there any accountability network? Like, if if they raise a thousand dollars at a raffle, do they have to account for the thousand dollars that they that they raise? Is there is there anyone that monitors? Do we monitor? Do the CRA monitor them? Like, how do they get monitored to keep their? Oh, sorry. <clears throat> But they operate within our township, and I know, I know members of, of committee sit on CIRA, and I'm just, I'm, I'm not understand. like, I mean, one of the biggest job that we do at this council table is, you know, is finance, is finance right? I mean, that's, and you know, overseeing how, how we spend, how we spend, and I, I've never seen any accountability when it comes to the groups that represent us in, in the township or that, that offers I don't think you need to unless they're coming forward and asking for money from us. In other words, like the Optimist Club, if they, they run a so it's not non profit, right? Uh, next to Columbus, we don't come to you and give you a monthly statement of us. Okay. And we work in Cardinal. I, I know, I mean, I think the only time you want it is if, well, like uh, the Bluegrass Festival. Sure. Imagine if they came to you and say, hey, I want two grand. Oh, what did you do last year? Uh, I don't know. We'll find it later on or I'll give it to you next year. Right. And, no, and no so, accountability. So that. And we have that accountability network because they file papers with you, right? They have to. Sorry, to the clerk. Okay. Maybe it'll be on a couple of items. Um, that's all the lawyer licensing. Yes, we have accountability. Um, our task force monitors and receives. Well, we do this before 
No, but we're also we're, we're not yeah, and we're not the ones that issue the not for profit status. I believe right. that's probably through CRA through the federal code, and so the responsibility is when they file their taxes, they do so in a way that justifies that. And uh, you know, I don't think we're in a position to need to ask them that. I mean, if they continue to uh, pass the scrutiny with regard at the CRA level, I don't. I'm not right. sure. Right. Sure. And our so so our. And to receive a community grant and donation, do you have to be a not for profit? This year, there, that is ideal. Um, there are exemptions to the current policy if they are not a not for profit. Okay. Uh, but the preference is there is an actual section on the application form indicating that they are a not for profit. Sorry, this, this turned into, I just thought of something. This turned into something I did not expect it to. I, I, I just was <laughs> from, it was just more from an accountability standpoint. You know, there was, uh, thousands of kids. There were a lot of people spent a lot of money on on a lot of candy that, that went through. There was a lot of dollars generated. A lot of you know, it, it sprung to me. You know, we do barbecues, we do fundraising. Is there an accountability mechanism that we have to be part of? The answer is no. Ultimately, uh, other than lotteries and and whatever we give in community grants and donations and and in kind. Other than that, there's no accountability. For any of those those groups other than their AGM and to their members. Okay, cool. Sorry, I didn't mean to steal that. I, I just thought it was just sorry, Rachel. My apologies. <laughs> Take a side there. Thank you, uh, anything, Thank you for your report. Anything <laughs> else on the report? Uh, Oh, no, I just thank like Rachel for her report. Yeah, yeah no, I, I thank you for the report. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, as you know there's a lot stuff. of events that happened, have happened. And, and uh, you know, I was at the trick or treat in Cardinal, it was great to see all the kids there. And uh, you know, I saw 140 kids, and, and they were there and gone in less than an hour. It was quite surprising. Yeah, 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 you know, I was having to fold up my trunk, and all of a sudden I realized there was nobody yeah. left, but it was just in front. Yeah. So, good planning on it. And uh, good to see the stuff coming up through, through the holidays as well, you know. Uh, Free skating, I think those are those are a lot of good Escape opportunities Santa. from the Santa. I've got it down Santa. Skate Santa. You know, I, sweater. I, I know a few Santa's, but I'm not sure they <laughs> I got a new uh, sweater. sweater. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So uh, thanks again for the report. Appreciate it. And uh, we're good there. All right. So uh so thank you very much. Moving on to um uh, number seven, which is the inquiries and notices of motion. Uh, any inquiries and notices of motion? No. So you have any more? No. No. Okay. And uh, I have none. Uh, question period. Any questions from the uh, from the uh, three people we have in crowd tonight? <laughs> no, we're good. All right. Uh, all right. Moving on to number nine, which is closed session. There is no closed session tonight. Uh, so uh, moving on to number 10 for adjournment. I do have a few things to say. So uh, uh, we did sort of touch on already, but this is, in fact, the last CDC uh, meeting until February. And uh, I'd like to thank the committee members. I believe I might have actually even wrote it down, forgot to mention the fact that. Um, uh, that now the human day will be in attendance tonight, so um, uh, we, we missed them, uh, and unfortunately that was the case, and Councillor Snail was uh, also off uh, uh, vacation, and we did have uh, Councillor Martel for a while, but he dropped off due to, I think, probably technical difficulties. Um, but uh, again, thank you for all the work we've done over the last year. It's been a, been a good first year, I think, as far as this committee goes. Uh, we have had so many delegations over the past year, which just shows how much the community is interested and involved. And participating in the events, and then uh, we just like to thank you know, everyone who came to speak to us about the topics that matter to them for the most. So uh, uh, we appreciate that, and um, uh, and yeah, and again, talks about which so the has uh, highlighted is uh, for anything that comes along with CDC oriented, we'll just go ahead and go um, uh, for the next uh, few months. I guess it was December, January, and February. We'll return to uh, to the PC. So on that note, uh, all in favor of adjournment? And we'll have some in a second. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah. I can't do anything. So I, <laughs> if you don't second it, this <laughs> deputy mayor was done. Oh, no, I second it. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. So, uh, all in favor there? Yeah. Okay. Unanimous. Yeah, We're done. Thank you very much.